Try to bring a fresh mind to the breath each time you meditate. Imagine that you were someone who hadn't been living in a body for a couple of lifetimes. And you are suddenly back in this body, and you have this unusual experience. There's this energy flowing around the body, flowing in the body, flowing in and out. And so you're curious, you're inquisitive, you want to find out what it's like. If you can bring that kind of freshness, that kind of inquisitive mind to the meditation, you find that you can learn things. If you have everything all figured out beforehand, that gets in the way of your learning. If you have a lot of negative attitudes about yourself in the meditation, that gets in the way too. This doesn't mean that we don't bring the lessons we've learned from one session of meditation into the next one, but we have to have the fresh eyes to see whether a particular lesson from the past actually applies right now. And so you have to develop this independent observer who's not tied up with any of the agendas of your mind, just wants to watch. And comes with a kind of doubt that's inquisitive. We all bring doubts to the meditation. The problem is learning how to bring the right kinds of doubt. Inquisitive doubt is the kind of doubt that leads you to learn, because it's open to new things. There are other kinds of doubt, though. There's nihilistic doubt, which is not really doubt at all. It's just a, it's a different kind of belief. The belief that the practice won't work, or that you aren't up to the practice. So recognize that it, it's not really a doubt, it's a kind of belief that gets in the way. and look to see what actually happens, what's actually going on right now. And when you have that fresh attitude towards the breath, you start seeing things you didn't see before. There are different kinds of ins and outs to the breathing that you might not have expected. You may suddenly notice that the breath is coming in in a part of the body that you hadn't expected before, or it's going out a different part of the body, or your experience of the in-breath and the out-breath are not quite what you thought they were before. And unless you're willing to look again and look again and look again like this, it's hard to see anything new. So from that point of view, you have to have an attitude that you're coming new to the breath, coming new to the meditation. so that you're not weighted down by the past. And when you're new to observing the present, you're also new to observing the lessons you did learn from the past. It's not that you totally forget everything. It's just that you're willing to look at everything in a new light. When the breath is this particular way, does it remind you of any time you've dealt with the breath in the past? To see the breath in this particular way, the way it is right now, you have to look with new eyes. And then just leave your mind open to see what comes in, what's, what it reminds you of in terms of other lessons you learned from the past. To see if they'll work with this particular kind of breathing. And when the mind is open that way, you find that all the useful things you've learned in the past, those are right at your fingertips as well. So when they talk about beginner's mind, it doesn't mean that you're totally ignorant. It's just you look at new things in a fresh light, both what you experience right now and what you remember from the past. You're willing to try on a new take. That word, try on, is, is important. Many times we feel that we commit ourselves to a particular way, or we've been committed to a particular way of acting. 
it seems like a major overhaul to change that particular way of acting, thinking that we're just going to have to do that forever now. Don't think in those terms. Think in the terms of trying something on, experimenting. One of John Fuang used to say, to play with the breath, this was what he was talking about, experiment. Get some enjoyment out of it. If you can't get enjoyment out of it, after all, the breath becomes a taskmaster. Your meditation object becomes an adversary. And then it's as if it has guardian demons at the door, like the guardian demons they have in the temples in Thailand. And just the thought of meditating brings to mind the, the snarls and the angry faces on the guardian demons. And you get repelled. So forget about them. Remind yourself that if it weren't for the breath, you wouldn't be here right now. The breath has looked after you this long, even though you haven't looked after much it, after it very much. Still, it's been faithful and loyal. even though it stayed in the background. Well, give it some chance to come up to the foreground, to see what else it can do when you get really take proper care of it. Give it the attention it deserves. And think of ways of making the breath interesting. Think of the breath coming in and out of the body, parts that you normally wouldn't think about or what you can do to change the experience of the breath, the texture of the breath. How smooth can you make the breath? One of John Fogg's students talked about one time when he was meditating in a bus. He normally wasn't that good a meditator, but for some reason when he sat in a bus, he found it very easy for the mind to settle down. One time he was meditating in the bus, and the breath felt delicious, he said. Well, how do you make the breath delicious? How does that happen? In other words, try things out. Use your ingenuity. Use your imagination. They've done studies of people with really good manual skills. The ones who really excel, say, in a sport or a musical instrument, and the ones who are a cut above good are the ones who have imagination how they approach their skill, figure out new ways of doing it. Yo-Yo Ma tells of playing a cello one time in a concert. I think it was a Bach piece. And all of a sudden one of the strings on his cello broke, and instead of stopping the concert, he decided to see if he could continue playing it on the cello with a missing string. He said that was by far one of the most enjoyable concerts he'd ever played. He was willing to experiment, use his imagination, and see what came. And that's how we learn how to get enjoyment out of our meditation. Use your imagination in finding things that will arrest the mind, in the sense of really interesting the mind, intriguing the mind. There's an awful lot going on in the body. Think of all the different parts you have in the body. You can think about those in your meditation. And then think about how the breath interacts with them. John Fung talked one time about feeling the, the breath in your bones. There's the breath in your blood vessels. See if you can locate those sensations. And then once you've located them and you can stay with them for a while, what can you do with them next? What can you do to make them more pleasant, more interesting, more arresting? This way the meditation always stays new. If it were a simple cut and dry technique, that would be the kind of insight you'd come up with, cut and dried. Because it, but because it's a live process, you're exploring the mind, gaining greater and greater sensitivity to what's going on. And at a 
because in any exploration you can't simply follow the rules. You've got to learn how to make variations on them. Try things out. Adjust this a little bit. Adjust that a little bit. That way you learn about cause and effect. If you don't experiment, if you don't take an active attitude in being curious, being inquisitive, how are you ever going to learn? How is the meditation going to teach you anything new? It simply becomes a process, and the question is, are you willing to put your mind through the ringer like that? Or put it through the assembly line that somebody else has set up? It's a scary prospect. But if you think of it instead as being a process of exploring what's going on inside, gaining a sense of cause and effect inside your mind, so you can sort out the, the cause, causes that are really useful and the ones that are not. That's when the meditation really leads to insight. Because after all, the insight here is to see what we haven't seen before, to realize what we haven't realized before, and so that what we come to see and what we come to realize will lead us to attain what we've never attained before. The meditation is supposed to take you to a new place. And that's, that can't happen unless you experiment and explore.